Let's watch this. This the rise video of fashion on NPCs. NPCs is sponsored by Squarespace.com. Apparently got it stands for non-player character. Originating in video games, it was a term used to label the character Nerd. in the game that the player could not control. And as technology has evolved, NPCs have gotten really a lot of detail. As you can see here, look at this. You're going to need to get really close to your screen to see the details on this one. Ready? Are you close to your screen? All right. Now NPCs look like this. I got it. Like, we love like, this term. It's like me. I'm reflecting on the screen. Term. We love calling people NPCs, kind of implying we're the main character too, from using it to describe people that listen to Drake or using it to describe people that really like Marvel movies to using it as a label for people that live right here. These guys, you people, this area. And I know this is a lot of space. And it's probably a lot of- I mean, it's true though. I mean, let's be real. That is true. People That's here, facts. maybe. I don't know. I don't think anyone knows, really. But there's no way that God coded the main character of the game to take place here. I'm sorry. That's asking too much. That's like expecting the main boss right. fight of a video game to take place in the loading screen. Like when Jesus comes back, there's no way he spawns in Oklahoma. But now the term has kind of expanded past its literal meaning and is now used as a word to just kind of describe anything mundane or lacking in personality. Just like the NPC models in a video game, fashion NPCs also look like the devs did not spend any time and just wanted to meet the bare minimum and fill some space. Like we probably all share this memory. But remember the crowd in the Madden games and the 2K games? Swear to God, I saw a couple of y'all in there. I remember faces. I can also spot a Fog Essentials where from a mile away. But this is completely normal. In fact, it's actually necessary. We need fashion NPCs the same way that games need filler in the audience, bro. I'm not gonna draw every single person as an individually unique model. We, we can't all be players. If everyone's the main character, then no one's the main character. Also, you can't be the main character in Panda Ducks. I'm sorry, I don't know who told you that. Also, I don't care that you and your girlfriend are matching. That's not, that's not unique. That's just the devs getting lazy and, and cloning your model. And with the interest of casually being into fashion at an all time high, as we can see here, we are also seeing the rise of fashion NPCs. I would like to preface this by saying that I'm aware that this does not help my case of the whole, bro, we can't wear shit around you. I know. This is just a big step in my quest. No, I have that represent. Not the hoodie, but like, it's one of my favorite. God damn it. I have the root shorts too. Completionist. But. There's a million fashion hobbyists and fashion historians, but in no time, I'll be the rank one fashion hater. All right, so what specifically makes a fashion NPC? What does that even mean? Your first thought is probably someone who doesn't have any interest in fashion in general and just kind of just wears clothes because it's illegal not to. And I, already, right. I already took L's. This is L's. the most common and obvious case of a fashion NPC, but you'll be surprised at how much deeper it gets. My theory is that a fashion NPC is spawned when something that was otherwise exclusive becomes readily available to the masses. And then even when that evolution happens, people are still left with the mentality of, I have something that you want, but you can't have. And for most, that suffices their wants and needs when it comes I think a big chunk of this is because, like, in order to be able to engage in fashion, which is an ever-changing concept and sometimes cyclical, you unfortunately have to have a lot of money. And if you don't have a lot of money, and it's the it's basically the the spectrum of like, first it's on a runway, then it's in like uh, high fashion uh, stores, uh, it's in like lookbooks, then it's in high fashion stores, then it basically makes its way to like Macy's or Nordstrom Rack first, okay. And then it makes its way to Macy's. And then ultimately you get to where fashion dies, which is the bargain bin at a Ross dress for less. Okay. That's this life cycle of, of fashion, which is of course ironic because like by the time it gets the Ross dress for less, so much time has passed between something being trendy versus something that is dead that it's almost coming back alive again. So you could literally sometimes maybe even, you know, Get something from there that could be like popping in a year or two. You know what I mean? Probably not though, because it's still Ross Dress for Less. Let's be fucking real. There's nothing good that comes out of Ross Dress for Less. It's literally worse than TJ Maxx and Marshalls. I was a 
Max Anista for a very long time in my life. Anyway. Oh, hi. It comes to fashion. NPC mentality. In business and tech, there's a theory called the diffusion of innovations. And there are five major groups of people in this. The innovators, the early adopters, the early majority, the late majority, and the laggards. I feel like the terms are pretty self-explanatory and easily translate into fashion. With the innovators and early adopters being like your style icons or your trendsetters. But it's only about 15% of people here. You can't all be here. And chances are, you're not. This is where everyone wants to be and where everyone thinks they are, but you're not. Yeah, because those people make the clothes, like, yeah. Anyways, the NPCs fall in this section right here, the back 50%, the late adopters and the laggards. And like I was saying about NPC spawning when scarcity becomes available, in the timeline of a trend, this is where it usually happens too. Most prime examples we have here are the fog essentials and the panda dunks. This is the meme that I love beating into the damn ground like a dead horse. And because of this reason, it's the perfect example of the diffusion of innovations in fashion, at least contemporarily, starting with fog essentials. Fear of God used to be the height of the fashion zeitgeist in like 2015 and 2016. Everyone wanted in on this, but the barrier for entry was really stiff. First of all, it was very expensive. That's why everything was stupid expensive, especially for the time where people weren't as ambitious with their fashion spendings as they are now. And even if you did have the budget or if your parents had the budget, everything was sold out. Remember zipper pants gate? I've never seen more people on Reddit, but as time went on, pieces became more and more available. And then with the genesis, it's so sad because like back then I would look at all that and go, man, I wish I had that. And I didn't have money. And like, it's just so out of fashion now of the essentials line the masses now had access to what was otherwise exclusive and like i said earlier about this being the fashion npc objective from the start they all settled here there's no need to innovate when i already feel like i'm better than you in my essentials and this exact thing went for panda dunks everyone wanted dunks Nobody could get them. Panda Dunks came out. They became super available everywhere and also so happened to be the easiest colorway to style ever of all time. Dunks still kind of feel exclusive. Now I got Panda Dunks. I'm the main character. I'm the main character. No, I'm the main character. No, I'm the real. Carl wears Panda Dunks outed. I mean, I, I, I do wear low. Um, Well, not Dunks, but I do wear Air Force Ones. They're low. I think that's fine. Like, uh, I don't know. Those are like pretty easy to wear shoes. Buzz Lightyear. No, I'm the real Buzz Lightyear. No, I'm the... And it's also not, like, very expensive. You know what I mean? As far as, like, shoes goes, it's like a normal shoe. Real Buzz Lightyear. This is just the first level, though. This is just the base model of which fashion NPCs can build on. And now we're starting to see the evolution of fashion NPCs across all genres of fashion and not just your basic mall core or, like, minimalism. It goes deeper. Rick Owens, a brand that you think to be too exclusive or out there to outfit NPCs, but you will be surprised. Rick NPCs have been spotted all over the globe, usually identified with their strict adherence to the basics like Ramones or Geos or, or just the essentials from the Dark Shadow line, really. The average Rick NPC sticks hard to the path of least resistance. It's just, just the easiest fit type that you can make in this aesthetic. Aesthetic, and you can make it's just expensive that's it that's like mother didn't know what to wear so we just went and bought the rack and like now it's fashion because what he's wearing is just expensive mb 550s are on the way out yes i know but also yeah the 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 amy leon durr wave was or door however the fuck you say it i don't know i don't know anything about dime square please don't yell at me uh that wave like really brought back. I mean, dad, that shoes have been on the way. Uh, that shoes have been on the way out for a while. I think ALD basically uh, gave it its last life force for a moment. But I still do like uh, dad shoes in general. They're comfy. Make the argument that oh, they're not NPCs because they had enough substance to even get themselves to styling Rick. As says the guy typing this, wearing a mountain hoodie right now. How could I be an NPC? I'm wearing Ramones. Ramones are the panda dunks of Rick. Hot take. Look at this outfit right here. The point I'm making is that could be anyone.
Surprise, it's me. The Rick NPC is just an NPC in a cool husk. Like here are three Rick NPCs right here, these types of outfits. And now here are three Rick outfits with some personality, with some individuality. I mean, that's crazy. Plot. Graphics don't make the game. Story does. Even Balenciaga, a brand where you think its exclusivity and its prestige can clinch its release from the NPC title. The people that follow this brand are mostly NPCs. I just gotta get clothes that are so big that they can compensate for my lack of creativity. Okay, listen, some people are big people, okay? I'm just yeah. saying. If my clothes are- Don't come at Balenciaga. They make clothes for large people. That's very important. I talked about this with making, I wish other brands would do it. Okay, I wish brands that didn't take photos of uh, children in weird and appropriate ways would also do clothes for big people. Massive? Who would have thought of that? What if my hoodie was just so big? What if my hoodie was just so big? Put me in a boardroom right now. Make the guys around me saying make the hoodies big and make the shoes big. What if we tried to incorporate personality and then now throw me out of the boardroom? I can buy my personality in the shape of a rainbow croc. Again, like I said, there are so many cool things that you can do with the style opportunity that wild pieces like this present. Yet we settle for mannequin fits. Again, graphics don't make the game. Now what these five fits right here have in common isn't obvious visually. I mean, come on, like how is this? How are these two fits even remotely related? But the common trait shared here is that they are all formulaic. There is no unique. The YSL buckle boots are a staple, okay? I always wanted to get one when I was younger. And of course, I had no money to purchase one. But those are fire. Sorry. Um, of course, I can't even c complete this YSL look regardless because they don't make any f clothes for someone who lives in the United States of America. Fuck. You ain't fitting in those pants? No, I do actually fit in the pants. They're very slim though, but nothing upper body. Anyway. Fit language, which brings us into the last section of this video, which is fit language. So when you think of fit language, right? You probably default to the obvious ones like Kerwin Frost, Bloody O, Wisdom, Tyrone, you know, the usuals that are just so out there they're just kind of in their own lane. This girl right here, Hamster Stance, is insane when it comes to identifiability. Her proportions and compositions can be spotted That's even if sick. I was just squinting at my screen like this. Like if I was like, I don't even know what I'm looking at, but I know that's her. Like, look at this. Like, you can tell that's her. It's just a prime example of maximizing style opportunity on all accounts. But fit language doesn't always have to be this demonstrative and obscure. A lot of the times it's very oblique and subtle. Someone who I think has very clear fit language despite being very aesthetically simple is Daniel Simmons. Taking a more minimal approach, I feel like the vibe he gives off is there's always that one guy that's like, that's just a big jacket. I can do that. Congratulations, you added nothing to the conversation, but you kind of are right. And that's what's kind of cool. A stand user could be anyone, bro. <laughs> Shut about up. It. It's nothing crazy. He had a very clear fit language. And also, fit language doesn't necessarily have to lead an aesthetic meta either. Like, these two might seem like they're kind of at the top of their influence in their own respective genres. But let me show you something real quick. Let me cook. Just let me cook. Hold up. All right. Inside you, there are two Hassans. What? One of these is known for his polarizing political opinions, massive, loyal online audience, and an avid affinity for fashion. The other one's a Twitch streamer. Dude, what? that's bullshit. Hassan Minhaj, one million percent, has NPC fits. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. I can't believe he just literally ripped me like this. At least I f try, man. Hassan Minhaj, wonderful guy. Wonderful, okay? Actually wonderful guy. Really great dude, which kind of sucks because I want to shit on him sometimes because he's like, oh, come on, bro. Really? Muslim Hassan doing political satire in America? Like, why couldn't we have different lanes? Off. But he is a really nice guy, so it's hard for me to say that. But if there's one area where I can shit on him, it's like, yeah, he has a, he has a type. He has like a perfect... Like, he, he actually has, like, a, 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 a style that he goes for, but it's like the panda dunks of style. I can already see the kex. See what I mean? Massive, loyal audience. I see you, chat. But you know what the difference between these two... Stop! Stop! Enough!
Enough! Two Hassan's is. Here's probably the hottest take of the year, and maybe one of my worst, but I also stand by it. One of these Hassan's has a definitive fit language, and it's probably not the one wearing the H&M bomber. <sighs> Hassan Piker is a good example of somebody with definitive fit language. You hate to fucking say it, but you love to fucking see it, and you also hate to fucking see it. You probably think I'm trolling, but like I said, let me cook. Let me cook. Take a look at this Let's go! sampler of Hassan fits I got here. Even though some of these might be questionable. Some of these might even be controversial. Hell, some of these might not even be that good. Some of them might even be bad. Agreed. Fair. Facts. Agreed. Not all of them are going to be winners. I say this all the time. Not all of them are going to be winners. I say it all the time. Hell, most of them might even be bad. A lot of them might even be bad. Oh, stop! You know what? Maybe even all of them might No, be there's good ones! Shut up! Bro, he keeps this in the DMs when there's a good one. Bad. They might even be disgusting. And when I look at them, I get a bad taste in my mouth and I get nauseous and I want to take a nap. But regardless of your opinion on these fits, there is a very unique and defined aesthetic that most people actively hating in fog essentials and panda dunks will never fully get a grasp of now these fists right here these guys are probably getting overtime pay being mid we need to call for the unionization of mid if you guys are going to be doing this full time you might as well get benefits with paid leave and at the end of the day though what you find appealing is subjective this all comes back down to this but it's how you incorporate those elements is what separates you from the crowd. Honestly, being a fashion NPC is fine, especially if it's not your goal to dress further than what the trends supply. But if you wanna feel like the main character, you gotta give us a reason why you deserve some space in the plot. And the same thing goes for your online- Actually though, Hassan Kor might be trash, but it's definitely distinctive. No, it's not trash. I take, no, it is distinctive and there's bad ones and I will own up to it. But like, especially lately, I think I've been putting out some fire. Can I get like a little bit of recognition here? Down to the goddamn socks, dude. Gucci down to the socks like I'm Biggie Papa. Okay? I mean, look at this. No, that's a good fit. Now nah, your fits peaked in 2019, not gonna lie. This is a good fit. Shut the fuck up, okay? It's got a hint of it's got a hint of, of military. It's got some uh it, it's new, it's different, it's got uh, you know, it's giving politics with the Pulitzer, whichever ones whichever fits i don't actually uh whichever fits i don't actually promote are my bad fits but if you were to hate on this if you were to hate on this you're lying these are perfectly fine this is a this is a well put together well crafted well thought out fit okay look green for christmas that's it that's the point are those the cargo pocket pants from that expensive store no they're like keep so they are expensive and uh but they're not cargo anyway and the pants i mean the shoes are doc martens Anyway, Chad doesn't need to understand that it doesn't need to have a pattern to be fashion. Yeah, that's just, that's what it is. Um, yeah, the shoes are Doc Martens. Uh, I, I saw this and it reminded me of you, Virgil Inspo. I mean, yeah, I would rock the shit out of this. I have rocked very similar fits to exactly this. I mean, the difference, of course, is that it's like very, from a long ass time ago. Anyway, that was a good fit. I stand by this fit from yesterday okay let's see here i think my other my other fit was good too the other day these past couple of days i put out a bunch of decent ones okay i think this one's a good fit obviously the pants could fit a little bit better but unfortunately i've lost some weight they're fucking size 38 waist i think that's a decent fit okay got a theme to it it's unique it's distinctive okay here's another one that's a good fit wait hold on there it is that's another good fit. That's my good boy fit, okay? These are good fits. They're distinctive. They're good. <sighs> yeah, if you change the shoes on that one, yeah, I mean, I'm inside, man. I didn't fucking, I didn't actually wear those as shoes. Those are my Uggs. Let's get back to this. And presence, like a website. Give me a reason to take you seriously. 
And to do this, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I made my entire brand website on Squarespace. Watch. All right. Um, not putting on the shoes for a Fitbit is a rookie move. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. The good boy fit had the Teddy Fresh pants. Yes. I watched the one on the accessories. That was a, that was a good video. He shit on me on that one too. Um, short Kings in the chat don't understand that the platform dogs when you're tall and 6'4 makes more of a fucking statement than platform dogs when you're short. Honestly, that's copium. Like, the real reason why I got it is because I got it online and it was the only one that had zippers on the side. I can't wear fucking boots that literally I have to, like, constantly lace up. And that was the only one that had zippers on the side and I didn't realize that a size 13 was also going to have a massive platform. That's it. And at the time... When I first bought those pair of Doc Martens, $130 for a boot was a lot of money to spend on a boot that I didn't actually have, so I just kept wearing it. But also, I like it. The irony, of course, is that the platforms now are kind of popping. Like, I talked about this already, the, the product, uh, what are they, the Maxis? Like, I, I, have, I have been a fan of the, the Prada Maxi loafers, or are they Maxi loafers? Is that, is that what they're called? For a long time. I think they're great oh no the monolith ones the black monolith brush leather loafers i think they're sick dude i think they're actually fire okay here i'll show you again some of you guys will make fun of it i think this is very easily a statement piece that you can basically put together with anything it's got platforms on it but it's so sick i love it dude i fucking love these shoes that was cool i, I feel cool as fuck I'm not gonna lie, that was easy peasy. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>